Hey, this is Michael Wild. The purpose of today's video is to discuss and show you how to properly set up Splunk to authenticate with your LDAP or Active Directory. In today's use case, I'm going to use Microsoft's Active Directory, but the principle should apply for most directories. If you want more information, you can pop over to the documentation on splunk.com slash base. And in the admin manual under add and manage users, there's a section on setting up user authentication with LDAP. So check that out if you need to go beyond what I'm showing you today. So normally when you log into Splunk, you got your admin change me. And you may choose to create some users in here, but ideally if you're an enterprise or a company that's large enough to have a directory, which most are, especially if you happen to have an exchange server, you will likely want users to log in to Splunk with the same credentials they use to log into their computer or to their domain or to any other applications that you might have wired up to directory. One of the most popular ways to configure Splunk is with this section called Manager. While there are configuration files that drive all of this and you can edit them by hand if you like, um, I like to do it directly through Manager. So first of all, if we go down here to authentication method and select it, it's telling me my current auth system is Splunk, just meaning that Splunk has its own little user database and you can create users in it. But I'd like to change it so that it integrates with my LDAP. So if I click that, it will let me configure Splunk to work with LDAP. So I create what's called a new LDAP strategy I'll say new. In this case, we're going to call this strategy Panda. Now, here's where it gets uh, a bit challenging for um, the average user because lots of folks don't necessarily know everything about Active Directory. They might not even know the right questions to ask their uh, Windows sysadmin or their directory admin. So I'll try to help you understand what some of these things mean and where to find them. So first, the host, that's pretty easy. In my case, which host is running Active Directory, DC1? It happens to be the same machine as Panda, but I could put the fully qualified domain name. In almost all cases, LDAP listens on port 389. If your sysadmin happened to put it on a different port, he or she should know what that is. And now we have to give Splunk some information about the directory to be able to access it or bind to it so that it can read from it, retrieve the list of users and groups. We have to tell it in the directory where the users are, where the groups are, and then we'll also give Splunk a fail-safe username and password just in case this whole thing doesn't work, your directory server is down, or something else has failed. We can still log in and make changes. So first, we've got this bind DN. What is that about? And it says this is a distinguished name to bind to the LDAP server with an administrator or another user that has access. In this case, I have uh, a user that I've created in my Active Directory. His name is the wild, and we're going to bind with that one. So if I pop over to Windows, there's a couple of tools that I have found useful so that I can decipher what it is that I need to type into Splunk. Okay. So first of all, if I'm looking for a user to bind, uh, and that really just means that this user is going to be able to, to log into the directory and get a list of things in it. Um, if I go into Active Directory Users and Computers, where most sysadmins go, Sure, I can find information about my user named the wild, but there's a limited amount of information on the LDAP speak about that, the actual path to that specific object. So that's not going to help me too much. There are two tools that are built into uh, or should be delivered with Windows. If they're not available, they're usually in a, in a resource kit. The first one I found was called LDP. An LDP is a nice little tool that sort of just lets me, uh, let's say, bind to the directory as the wild. 
and access the directory, browse it, we'll view the whole tree. And usually you want to view the domain or the section that you that you might be want to go after, which is usually um, you know your domain name or something similar to that. And that lets me browse the directory. And it works pretty well. But I've actually found one of, another one of Microsoft's tools which is also very effective. And the real point is that we're getting this information like CN equals the wild, CN equals users, DC demo, DC Splunk.com. So those are some of the things we're going to have to type in here because that's kind of LDAP speak. So if you go to start and then click run again and type ADSI edit.msc, this little tool is going to come up. It's going to let me um, make some changes or browse or get information about my directory in a really cool way. And I actually like this better than LDP. So here I'm browsing my domain, which is dc1.demo.splunk.com. And as we can see, I have this container called users. And I'm going to go down to my CN equals the wild. Now, if I right mouse on this and click properties, I get all the attributes that are on my object, the wild. But there's a lot of attributes that actually don't have anything set. So if I click show only attributes that have values, I get only the things that I really need to, to see. And what we're really looking for is the bind DN or the distinguished name of the user that I'd like to bind to the directory with. So here we go. I'll just click on this. I'll double click on it and I'll make a copy of it. And we'll go back here and I'll type, paste that in there. And I'll also, paste in my password now, there are some other optional fields such as page size if you want to limit the amount of records to return um, but most of the time if you're using an active directory you don't necessarily have to do that because you can filter things now I need to give it the distinguished name of the user base or which container are my users in. And you may have a more sophisticated infrastructure than I do, but ultimately the users that you want to be able to log into Splunk are going to be in some container. And in this case, again, minor in CN equals users, but I need to give it the fully qualified distinguished name. So again, we'll say show attributes that have values, grab the distinguished name out of here, copy that, paste it over into Splunk. Now, there's a this section here is called user base filter, and that lets me filter out um, users that will be shown inside of Splunk or that the directory will even be asked for. So let's say I had 50,000 users and I didn't necessarily want to retrieve the entire list of those users, I could filter them out. So if we were to look here at my user ID, the wild, one of the ways in which we can filter is usually by object class. So if I do, I'll just double click on this so you can see what object classes exist. Organizational person, person, top, user. So I could say object class equals user. If I wanted to get really fancy, I could add an object class called Splunk and then add that object class to any user and then just filter on any user that had the object class Splunk. And really this is just going to give me the list of users that can even be managed or logged into Splunk. So that's what user based filter is about. In for username attribute, well, where's that? If I pop back here and go to the wild again, and I think it's important to sh actually show you where this stuff is in the directory so that you can understand it as I had to learn about it as well. So if we go to the user name attribute in, in Microsoft Active Directory, that username is called, that attribute is called Sam account name. So we can see Sam account name is the wild. In other directories, it might be called something else, and uh, the documentation for that should tell you. 
Now, the real name attribute. So when Splunk uh, actually displays your name in the list of users, where does that come from? And if we look in my record, we can see, well, there's name. That's the wild, but we want the display name, which is Michael Wild. So in this case, we're going to grab the attribute called display name. Now, in Splunk, the way things work as far as the access level that you have is based on a set of roles, such as admin, user, power, and you can make roles to your heart's content. Now, those roles will map to a group within LDAP. And it, grouping users is a really easy way to just instantly give someone access to Splunk because you just go into your Active Directory, add them to a group, let's say called Splunk Power Users, and now they can log into Splunk and have whatever capabilities a power user has. Pretty simple. So we need to tell Splunk where the groups are that we want to target. And in my Active Directory, while there is a place of groups related to domain admins, computers, domain controllers, and guests, there's also another OU or organizational unit called groups. And in my case, I've actually created three groups in here, Splunk admins, Splunk power users, and Splunk users, which we're going to use in a minute. So I'm going to do that properties thing again, show values, and we're going to grab the distinguished name of this container. where we should start looking for groups. I could use the group base filter to filter out groups in the way in which I did uh, with users. So group name attribute. And as we can see, the name of this group Splunk admins happens to be stored in the exact same attribute as uh, the user's name was, Sam account name. So we're gonna use the same thing for that, so just go up here and copy Sam account name and tell it that's where it's going to find the group name attribute. Um, in my case, I don't need group mapping attribute because um, everything's pretty standard here, but we do need group member attribute. And in this version of Splunk, it says optional, but it is not. So if I type in the word member, That would be the attribute that's applied to anyone that is a member of this group. Now I'm gonna create a fail safe user. In my case, I'm just gonna call it Splunk and I'm gonna give it the password Splunk and Splunk. And then I'll save it. So now I have this LDAP strategy and I need to do a few things. I need to enable this and then map it. So before we do that, let's go look at what Splunk actually did. Splunk made a configuration file in this directory, Splunk home slash Etsy slash system slash local. And in here, there's a file called authentication.conf. So you can see exactly what uh, we entered in has been stored in the file. Uh, my fail safe password has of course been encrypted, although we all know that it's Splunk and everything has pretty much been set up for me. Now, don't forget, as I did, uh, this comes disabled by default. So if you save it and log out, you won't be able to log in as your new user, as your domain user, because you haven't told Splunk to enable this LDAP strategy. So it's gonna enable it and tell you you're gonna be booted from the system. Make sure you write down your fail safe login. Okay, so I've been booted from the system. I'm gonna log in as my fail safe user right now. Splunk, Splunk. I'm gonna go back to manager. Go back to authentication method. And now we can see it's set up for LDAP, but I need to configure LDAP role mapping so my users have a role they can log into. So if I click configure LDAP role mapping, we have LDAP groups set up, which of course, are here in my Active Directory under Groups. As we can see, we've got Splunk Admins, Splunk Power Users, and Splunk Users. Let's go to this uh, 
members. We've got power user guy, Splunk admins. We've got some members. The wild is also a member, which is kind of cool. And then I'll have another user here. Uh, I'm also a user. Let's actually add a user here too. Let's add a, here's another user, we'll add Lachlan. And now because I've added Lachlan to the Splunk users group, and I'm gonna take this LDAP group and map it to a role in Splunk. I'm gonna map that to the user role. So anyone that's in that group can then uh, log in. Save it. And I'll do the same thing for admins as well. Say user is admin. They can delete. They can do everything. And we'll save. And for the sake of the demonstration, I'll also take power users, the group that I've created, and map it to the power user role, which is built into Splunk. Great. That wasn't that hard. Now let's see what the result was. I'm going to log out. And I'll log in as the wild. And this is authenticating directly with the Active Directory server running on Panda or DC1. And if we click on manager, we see all of the things that I can do based on me being an admin. And we'll log out, log in as Lachlan. And Lachlan is a user role. And as you can see, he doesn't have nearly the capability as far as configuring Splunk that I do. So hopefully that helps get you up and running with LDAP and takes away some of the mystery on exactly what to do, where to find things. Again, manager is how you use it to set up. The documentation is here for you. And remember, there's a couple of tools, the ones that I was using, we're obviously the Active Directory users and computers so that I could assign people to groups, but then that adsiedit.msc, which should be built into Windows for you, which lets you really get access to the different things that are happening in the directory so that you can properly configure Splunk. Hope that helps, and happy Splunking. Mm -hmm.